extensive framework of rules, principles and practices. In that spirit, the Commission remains to be convinced about the opportunity of a specific legislation providing for a horizontal framework of an EU administrative law at this stage. Thank you. Thank you, Martin Diet. Now, time for our rapporteur, uh, uh, Madame Laura Ferrara. Thank you, President. I'd like to thank the Commission and I'd like to thank all the colleagues who've spoken for their support. And I'd also like to thank the Shadows once again. Transparency is the um, ultimate goal that we have to reach, but it's also a tool, it's an instrument to try to breach the gap between European citizens and the institutions in order to ensure that citizens are more involved based on the principle of participative democracy and also to increase the trust which seems to be lacking towards the European Union today. I was disappointed to hear, including in some discussions with colleagues, that citizens aren't interested in, uh, in certain uh, policies or instruments or they don't understand them. Some information uh, doesn't isn't clearly understood or um, isn't accepted. Often things aren't understood because of the technical wording that's used or because of uh, how technical some of it is. So the challenge that the European Parliament is facing as well as the uh, Commission and the Council is to try to involve citizens more and to ensure that information is easier for citizens to access to ensure that uh, information is available and to allow citizens to decide what they're interested in and uh, what isn't so interesting to them. So we have to make information uh, easier to understand and easily accessible. It's difficult to find your way around the different websites of the different three institutions. So once again, we want to have a one-stop shop for access to and make it easier for citizens to use their right to information. Uh, in international negotiations such as TTIP, we have to involve uh, citizens uh, who aren't happy about uh, the confidentiality of these agreements. We have to look at the influence of lobbyists and uh, discussions between the three institutions in trilogues, for instance. And I hope that following this European Parliament uh, opinion, as well as those from previous years, will help us move towards greater transparency. Thank you. Thank you. And now I would like to close the debate on this particular report. And I would like to remind you that the vote on the report will happen tomorrow. We move on to the next step, which is uh, oral question to the Council and the Commission, Transborder Protection of Children in Europe. We will have the first speaker on the list, the rapporteur, the author of the question, Mr. Svoboda. Two and a half minutes. The floor is yours. Uh, dear Chair, Commissioner and Minister, uh, the Brussels 2A regulation has undoubtedly been a successful union instrument that has benefited EU citizens through the creation of a wide-ranging scheme of jurisdictional recognition and enforcement rules in matrimonial and parental responsibility cases. That being said, we are all aware of its shortcomings when it comes to child abduction cases. In this respect, it appears that the regulation has been overtaken by events. That is to say, the growing number of transnational family dissolution proceedings, uh, which has been aggravated by the increasing divergences between the legal rules applicable to family dissolutions. On top of this, family law, which is a, comp uh, a competence of the member states, has been fragmented into different types of family models, marriage, registered partnership, simple cohabitation. As a result, it appears that society has moved on and that the regulation has been left behind. Members of the European Parliament are confronted with the shortcomings of Brussels 2A on a regular basis, 
not only in the Petitions Committee, but also in correspondence and contacts with citizens who are at the end of their tether. We are all aware that the law is a blunt instrument when it comes to family questions, that judges and lawyers are not necessarily the persons best equipped to deal with such questions, and that the courts not necessarily are the best or most cost-effective forum. We need to reflect on this and try to identify ways to help our citizens in these painful moments of their lives while safeguarding and promoting the best interests of the child. The continuing success of the regulation will depend on its successful and targeted revision. Now uh, that uh, the main areas of complexity and malfunction have been identified, it is high time that appropriate action is taken to tackle the last remaining insufficiencies. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you much indeed. Uh, uh, and also, Opar, uh, Madame Cecilia Wikström, two and a half minutes. Take a floor, please. I thank you very much, <coughs> Mr. Chairman. And I would like to thank the colleagues, both in my committee, the Petitions Committee, and in the Legal Affairs Committee, for their cooperation on this issue. It is our aim in my committee to improve our cooperation with the legislative committees to ensure that the citizens' concerns and experiences are taken better into a consideration in the legislative process. In addition to the testimonies of the direct experiences and problems related to EU law, the petitions that we received also have an important role in helping to identify problems with the national implementation of EU law in the member states. This is important when we discuss how we best can protect the best interest of the child across borders in Europe. In connection with the upcoming review of the Brussels 2A regulation and also in the light of the increasing numbers of petitions addressed to Parliament, I am happy that this debate takes place here tonight. It's, a, it's an issue of great importance. Because our committee has received a large number of petitions related to children welfare issues and their treatment by either judicial or the administrative bodies in the member states. This is definitely uh, a uh, testimony for more cooperation in family matters with transborder aspects. And there is not only an urgent need to review the legal instruments, but also to try to find a way to avoid the harmful situations described in the petitions that we have received. We have ensured the freedom of movement, but it is also our duty to take into deep consideration the consequences that citizens from different nationalities meet, decide to build a family, but as we know, couples can face problems and finally separate. That's why we must make all the possible efforts to put instruments in place to handle the situation in the best way possible and above all with the best interest of the child as the paramount ob objective in all decisions. These two oral questions tonight have been raised in order to draw attention to the concrete problems that citizens are facing. Finally, on a more personal note, I'm happy to see that my dear colleague Janine hennis plashert is here representing Council tonight. I'm sure that you will provide us with, as always, clear and fruitful answers to the question raised. And the same goes, of course, also for Commissioner Vera Jourova. Thank you very much for your deep consideration on these important matters. Thank you very much. Tak. Thank you. On behalf of uh, Council, uh, Madam Minister Janine ennis plashard <laughs> Mr. Chair, thank you very much, Madam Commissioner, Honourable Members, and many thanks to Cecilia Wikström for the very kind words. Um, I would like to recall the importance the presidency, presidency attaches to the work on civil law, in particular on family matters and e-justice solutions. And I take this opportunity to thank the Chairs of the Legal Affairs and Petitions Committees, Pavel Svoboda and, of 
course, my previous colleague, Cecilia Wiekscher. I thank them for coming with these questions and ideas to complement the EU message already in place to protect the best interests of the child in cross-border situations. Now, on adoption. As you know, the issue of adoption of children is a matter which is not regulated at EU level, but by national laws and by some international conventions, particularly the The Hague Convention of 1993, to which all EU member states are parties. This convention aims at protecting adoptive children in their countries, if possible, by offering them a home in those countries. It provides for cooperation between the authorities of the different states. Now, the Council may adopt measures concerning family law with cross-border implications, following Article 81.3 of the Treaty, including in the field of adoption, but only on the basis of a proposal from the Commission. Now, on welfare and, and child poverty, concerning the issue of the welfare of children, I would like to say a few words on the fight against poverty, which is a complex reality affecting many, many children, unfortunately. The fight against poverty is one of the objectives of the Europe 2020 strategy, and it's also one of the Presidency's priorities. Now, working closely with the Social Protection Committee, the Presidency has therefore tabled Council conclusions on an integrated approach for combating poverty and social inclusion. In this document, which is to be adopted in June, the Council encouraged Member States to address child poverty and promote children's well-being through integrated strategies in accordance with the Commission recommendation investing in children. And the Council will also invite Member States to intensify the exchange of knowledge, experiences and best practices in this field. And let me mention in particular the Roma children, because yes, we must also continue to address other long-standing challenges as the situation faced by Roma children. And I do thank the European Parliament for keeping this issue on the EU agenda, including on International Roma Day earlier this month, April 8, to be precise. Now, as regards mediation, the EU has put in place the 2008 Mediation Directive, which aims at facilitating access to alternative dispute resolution. It promotes the amicable settlement of disputes by encouraging the use of mediation and by ensuring a balanced relationship between mediation and judicial proceedings. Moreover, the Brussels 2A regulation foresees mediation as one of the functions of cooperation between central authorities in matters of parental responsibility. Now, there is common understanding in Council that the revision of Brussels 2A is a topic of great importance, and to be honest, it is about time. On e-justice, on improving access to information in the justice field, you know that the e-justice portal was launched in 2010 in collaboration with the Commission and the Member States. The Council's second action plan on e-justice stresses that information related to minors should be included in the e-justice portal. A specific expert group is now examining the ways to expand the information on minors already available on the portal. And your specific question relating to adoption procedures could indeed be considered in this context. Now, in closing, <coughs> Mr. Chair, I wish to say that the Council awaits with great interest the Commission proposal amending the Brussels 2A regulation, as this is the cornerstone of EU judicial cooperation in matrimonial matters and matters of uh, parental responsibility. I thank you. Thank you, Valus. Thank you. Uh, Madam Minister, now time for our Next guest, uh, Commissioner Vera Jourova. Take the floor, please. Thank you for proper pronunciation of my name. <laughs> uh, Mr. President, honorable members, I would like to thank uh, Yuri and Petty Committees for organizing this debate, which I very much welcome. As has been said several times here already, the Brussels 2A regulation is an extremely important piece of legislation for many families in Europe. 
it has been applied for 10 years and proved to be very useful. But time has come to review it. The Commission intends to come forward with a proposal late June this year. Our assessment is that the Brussels 2A regulation works overall well with regard to matrimonial matters. We do not envisage at this stage the need to revise it in this respect. On the other hand, there is clear evidence for the urgent need to revise the regulation as regards parental responsibility aspects. You better than anyone are aware of numerous cross-border cases in which the judicial cooperation based on this regulation isn't fast enough, to say the least. The ch children end up being hostage of lengthy legal disputes. The mechanisms put in place by the Brussels 2A regulation have helped in determining parental responsibility or settling child abduction cases, but we have to take additional steps. I intend to further clarify the rules on parental responsibility to improve the enforcement of judicial decisions, to speed up the procedures and make sure that the best interests of the child are of primary consideration and effectively protected. More concretely, we are considering measures on the following aspects. Firstly, to speed up the return procedure. There are still far too many child abduction cases in which parents with uh, an enforceable return order are stuck in lengthy proceedings. Abducted children must be returned swiftly as passing of time can have irreversible consequences for the relationship with their parents. Evidence shows that in those member states with specialized courts, the return procedure can be much smoother and quicker. Secondly, to see whether the existing exequatur procedure is still needed and to define the grounds for refusal for the enforcement of judgments. It is unacceptable that currently a parent can be left without any possibility to see his or her child for years due to delays in the enforcement of judgments. Thirdly, the in to increase judicial cooperation and mutual trust between member states, for example, when it comes to the specificity of family proceedings. Fourthly, to smoothen the differences in national rules governing the hearing of the child. Too often these rules are invoked to refuse a judgment from another member state. And I am convinced that while acknowledging different legal traditions, we can and must do better to respect the child's right to be heard. Finally, to improve the cooperation between national authorities with responsibility for child protection or parental responsibility matters. We need a strong network of these authorities to help parents in enforcing their parental rights abroad. Besides these key changes to the Brussels 2A regulation, we will also continue our awareness raising activities, targeting also child welfare and consular authorities. This is duly reflected in our funding priorities and calls for proposals. To conclude, let me refer to the aspects related to adoptions. The Brussels 2A regulation does not cover these aspects. The functioning of child protection and welfare services is governed by national law. The Commission has thoroughly examined the numerous petitions concerning adoptions without parental consent that you have recently received. None of them falls into the remit of EU law. However, the Commission is contributing to the elaboration of a common understanding of how the rights of the child can best be protected and promoted. For instance, let me point to the ten principles of integrated child protection systems which were debated in the last European Forum of the Rights of the Child and which are also mentioned in your draft resolution. We will continue to support Member States in implementing a, right, uh, a child right-based approach. And I know, I know that also you, through dialogue and awareness raising, can have a real impact 
on improving the situation on this very important matter. I am looking forward to our close cooperation on these files in the best interest of children and for the benefit of families in Europe. Thank you. The Queen. Thank you much indeed, uh, Madam Commissioner. Now it's time for representatives of political groups. Uh, on behalf of uh, EPP, uh, Madam Roberta Metzola. Thank you. We are currently living in an age where multinational families are on the increase. In the European Union, there are hundreds of thousands of these families and they should be offered support even when the relationship disintegrates. These families look to the Petitions Committee to give them a voice. Therefore, I would like to support Cecilia to emphasize the significant role that the Petty Committee can carry out with regard to children's rights. As the Commissioner and the Minister, minister said, we must never raise false hopes by implying that we can solve every problem that is put before us. We must not forget that this is mainly a member state competence, not an EU one. However, there are several cross-border cases where, yes, we can certainly step in and do more to ensure that chi children's rights are protected and strengthened. This should be our highest political priority. Therefore, on my own personal initiative, as well as that of other colleagues, we wanted to open this up to as many member states as possible. We have come together to question the Council and Commission on the work being done in this area. Therefore, as the Pe Petty Committee, we have come together to present a resolution from all the groups on a number of issues regarding child protection in Europe. This is another way of lending a voice to those who submitted petitions to the European Parliament. I appeal and I conclude by saying that all the members of this House should put aside their political label and address the reality facing us. When children are involved, there are no compromises that can be accepted, and we have to protest their best interest ultimately. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of SND Group, uh, Deputy Josef Weidenholzer, one half minute, take a floor, please. Thank you very much, President. It's important that the Brussels II regulation from 2003 be revised, above all because it uh, refers to relations between different states, and often that's insufficient. Cross-border cases can't be re restricted to just two states. Often it is a question of several states, and so there's several uh, legal uh, conundrums that uh, crop up. There's a uh, Belgian and f uh, French uh, people who are involved in a struggle uh, before the courts, but none of them live in Belgium anymore. And there are many cases where several states are implicated, and I think the revision of the Brussels 2A regulation has to take that into consideration. The lack of legal clarity and the question of uh, unclear deadlines means that children suffer as a result. We see that again and again it's not in the best interest of the child the way these things are done. So the rights of the child have to be strengthened in the Brussels 2A regulation and uh, we have to try and make sure that the proceedings are, court, uh, are kept as uh, short as possible. There has to be very clear laws applicable and there has to be a a clear understanding of the, what the future holds for a child and that is decisive of course for the future of their lives. Uh, thank you very much indeed. On behalf of ECR Group, uh, Deputy Ulrike Carlson, one minute to follow, please. Thank you, President. Thank you. People meet each other in Europe, they fall in love, they have children and everything goes very nicely. But in many cases, uh, this love is not eternal. Couples split up and children have to be shared out amongst the couple. And sometimes in, uh, in this process, it's not so easy. They may come from different countries and it makes the situation even more difficult to solve. 
in the petitions committee we often see cases where member states and their courts can't uh, agree on their evaluations of these types of cases. In many cases, member state courts will defend the interests of their own citizens and the child is, becomes hostage to these types of problems between the interests of different member states. This proposal isn't trying to force member states into doing anything. This is a proposal to ensure that we have good agreements which will ensure that children of parents of different nationalities are t treated fairly. That's in the interest of everyone, particularly in the interest of the child. Tak, thank you. Um, on behalf of uh, ALDA Group, Deputy Antonio Marino Epinto. One and a half minute, take a floor, please. This debate uh, clearly points to the, the specific problems faced by European citizens in terms of children's rights where there are different jurisdictions involved, two or more. Increased mobility within the European Union inevitably means an increase in cross-border court cases involving children, so it's a pressing matter, an urgent matter to boost the judicial cooperation between member states this in terms of training and exchange of good practices between social services and the courts that deal with such cases, that is to say ad adoptions or abduction of children, but generally speaking all uh, jurisdictions covering family issues. There is a degree of social alarm by generated some of these cases, so the EU's authorities should encourage the member states to create specialist courts with exclusive competence on such cases. Here we can't hesitate, we can't talk too much or talk it around the, the houses. What must take primacy is the interest of uh, the child. Now. We're not seeking to impose a single vision or single approach to uh, these issues, but rather we want to turn the European Union into an area of free circulation of people, not just of goods, services and capitals. Thank you. Obrigado. Thank you. On behalf of the NGL group, Madam Kostadinka Kuneva, one minute. Take a floor, please. Thank you, sir. There is something rotten in the state of Denmark concerning uh, child protection. We have uh, petitions in the petitions committee concerning uh, the care of, and the welfare of uh, children in the UK, in Denmark or Germany, and their number is like an avalanche. They are either about child services or adoptions uh, or uh, children taken into care or visitation rights or even uh, the rights of uh, parents that have been uh, accused of sexual abuse and those things are shocking. So we have a lot of petitions that mean that there is a crisis of uh, institution of family in the north and at the same time we cannot uh, answer to the question what happened to the 10,000 unaccompanied minors uh, uh, refugees that uh, entered uh, the EU and according to Europol are still missing. So I would like to ask you to commit to full support of the rights of uh, children with decision, with uh, concrete decisions. And uh, we should also face the other humanitarian crisis we're facing in the South, the refugee crisis. And this is an ethical obligation. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, and now, on behalf of Greens, EFA, uh, Madam Tatiana Zdanoka. One minute, take a floor, please. Thank you, Honorable Minister Denis Blashar, former colleague, and um, Commissioner Jurova. Thank you for your um, statements. And I hope that Council and Commission will take on board our resolution, which is prepared just. Uh, on studying the desperate uh, calls for help addressed to our committee on petitions. 
Uh, it is uh, evident that following the significant level of movement of workers between member states and the increasing number of mixed couples, the number of cross-border child protection issues involving custody removal is growing as well. I will give only one number showing how this problem is actual for my country, Latvia. During the two first months, only two first months of this year, 11 children were withdrawn from the families of Latvian citizens working in Britain and placed in British care families. The cross-border mechanisms are to be put in place when it involves determining over the custody of children. We need to input the receiving state the duty to inform the consular authorities of the state where a child is a national of. And a clear, gently detailed and developed definition of the term habitual residence of the child in the revised Brussels II regulation is needed. Thank you. Madam, do you accept a blue card from Mr. Thomas Dechowski? Yes? Mr. Dechowski, take a floor, please. Thank you. Colleague, uh, you have mentioned a case uh, when uh, children were taken from your nationals uh, in the United Kingdom. However, even more children were taken from Latvian families in a non-EU member state in Norway. Do you think that the European Union has been protecting uh, sufficiently the rights uh, of children and families uh, in other than EU member states? Thank you. Time for answer, Madam. Although Norway is not an uh, EU member state, we, uh, as a committee of petitions, when hearing uh, these cases in Nordic councils just last week, uh, we put a lot of attention to also uh, alongside with Swedish and Finnish and Danish cases, also Norwegian situation. But United Kingdom is only one state where adoption without consent is uh, working, and that's the biggest problem now for EU member states. Uh, yes, thank you very much indeed. And now on behalf of EFDD group, uh, Honorable Lonora Evi. One minute, take a floor, please. Thank you, President. It's vital to improve legal cooperation between member states in cross-border cases that involve minors. We have to guarantee that uh, sentences are recognized in between different member states and that they are respected and we, in order to ensure that parental visiting rights are respected or perhaps minimal standards for um, hearings for um, minors in uh, courts and also ensuring social protection for their rights. We can't uh, f forget uh, cases of abuse uh, for instance in Germany a very recent case has been uh, one of uh, a father that was separated from her two children by their German father this was uh, this is uh, clearly unacceptable the notion of a child is still uh, vague and uh, is applied very superficially in cases the European Union can apply rules to protect competition and banks and financial instruments, but it can't protect the rights of people and of children. Yes. Thank you very much. Mr. Le Breton. Thank you, Mr. President. The questions raised by the European Parliament face two difficulties. First of all, I ought to um, hostile to the idea of automatically acknowledging or recognizing adoptions in the member states. It would lead to same-sex adoptions or uh, adoptions uh, from uh, in vitro produced children, and I accept neither of these two possibilities. Also, uh, I mistrust notions such as uh, the interest of the child, which is being instrumentalized to do away with the traditional uh, family 
living together does this kind of thing and basically what uh, this ultimately does what this thinking does is take away the child away from the family I think the real interest of a child is to grow up in a family made up of a mother and a father Senora. Thank you very much Ms. Patera Thank you President Every year the European Petty Committee receives many petitions on children. The scale of the problem shows that we need urgently new instruments for cross-border cases. Uh, the problems that we have identified refer to many areas. One of these areas is insufficient implementation of Brussels II regulation. Uh, other problem is the lack of transfer of information when it comes to protection of children, especially when we have trans-border cases. We also have complaints that refer to failure to, uh, to implement a given court's de court decision. Uh, the system that we are going to build has to be multidimensional, has to use many instruments. The Polish experience shows that many problems relate from poor access to information and legal aid. That's why it's very important to have a relevant financing system in place, especially for those organ bodies that provide information and provide assistance. Uh, it would be best if we had one uh, pan-European hotline. We also should publish guidelines that would allow citizens to be, become more uh, fluent when it comes to the usage of such laws in various member states, because sometimes it's the issue of not knowing what laws are in place. Such actions should be urgently taken. If our words as politicians saying that the interest of child is the most important thing should not stay on paper. Thank you very much, Mr. Martin. Now. Madame la Ministre, Madame le Minister, Commissioner, I'm sure that you are convinced that Europe is built on sound foundations, free movement of people, free movement of uh, goods and free movement of love. Yes, why not? Free movement of love. Erasmus is about love as well. It's allowed two, more than two million students to discover a new country. And if I understand the study right that the Commission's produced, it's about uh, a million Erasmus babies that have been produced. Uh, for that reason alone, long live Europe, long live love. And uh, sometimes love uh, fails and crumbles, and uh, even when children are there. But Europe is not just love, unfortunately. There are social problems, there are accidents of life that strike families and sometimes those the most vulnerable. And we see that national laws are not always able to deal with third countries when we're talking about family members coming from other countries. Then you have families who suffer and above all the children suffer. Of course, nobody's claiming that the various decisions taken here or there will go against the interests of the child, but sometimes you can have good faith and make the wrong decisions anyway, uh, because you have to think about several people at the same time. We have to do everything to make sure that the member states collaborate and cooperate by understanding the best possibilities available uh, and not uh, accept any taboos to achieve that. So, of course, this will not be a panacea of all the problems in Europe, but I think we wanted to send a clear message to the Council, to the Commission and to the Member States, no borders for rights of the child. Thank you, Ms. Zietnanska. Thank you very much. Even though generally it's best for the child to grow up in its biological family, it's not always possible. Children face uh, violence, abused, or neglected, and then it's uh, important for the social services to intervene. In the EU member states, there are often cases where children are uh, forcefully withdrawn from their parents, even though there hasn't been a case for abuse, and uh, with a bit of help, these families could have been functional. Instead of giving the closest relatives the opportunity to care for the children, these children are put up for adoption, they are given to complete strangers, and it's impossible for them to keep in touch with their parents, with their uh, siblings. Not every single foster carer is aimed at uh, the happiness of the child. Uh, some of them are more interested in financial benefits and therefore we can't really speak of a solution with the best uh, benefit for the child. I welcome this resolution uh, which aim is uh, to uh, um, improve uh, the rules in the EU, uh, also to improve uh, the rules uh, for um, case of 
difficult divorces, uh, also uh, to offer uh, interpretation services, legal aid, improve uh, cooperation um, between the member states. This everything could bring uh, what we aim in this uh, uh, resolution, that, that is the best benefit of Thank you very much, Mr. Ordano. Thank you, Mr. President. Today's an example of the kind of pernicious manipulation of the law or rights, the rights of a child in this case. Now, apparently there are situations which I acknowledge are complex in terms of uh, mutual recognition for children, but the European Union has decided to step in for member states and decide. And I say thrice no to this. The EU shouldn't tinker with issues pertaining to the rights of the family. The Europe is not the sole guardian of rights. You have no right to uh, judge on national law uh, in the name of the Charter of Fundamental Rights when there are clearly no, uh, no breaches of this charter just some, some conflicts of law. It's not in the interest of a child to open the door wide open to European recommendations in favour of recognition or allowing uh, medical procreation of uh, doubtful nature and the destruction of our natural model of the family. We will not give up on this. Thank you very much. Ms McGuinness. Thank you, Chair. After that last intervention, let me just bring the debate back to its core this evening, which is about children in cross-border situations. I have to say, even though it's rather late in the evening, I've been very impressed by the contributions from Council and Commission. Very often you get criticised, but I thought you were very honest and open on this very sensitive issue. Uh, in my role as children's rights mediator on this issue in the Parliament uh, and in the Petitions Committee, we come across the saddest of cases. And we try in my office to bring about mediations. We do it very rarely because usually people come to us at the very end stage. And I would appeal to the Commission, and you've mentioned mediation, to do as many member states are trying to do, bring mediation in early so that it can fix problems without that um, tension and adversarial system that is the courts. And I think if member states do that, uh, and we look at it at a European level, it can be very, very helpful. Clearly in the Brussels II review, you've mentioned some important points that have got to be looked at. It's about timeliness. A child removed by one parent from the other needs to be returned to its home in a timely manner. And we have several examples of member states who are not doing that. Lastly, as time is short, we need judicial cooperation to be enhanced. We need to have informal networks for this to work properly. It is a problem that will not go away and it needs our eyes, our, our eyes watching very carefully. But I've been, I've been pleased that this evening there is some at least talk of progress. Thank you. Gracias, señor Cofferati. Thank you very much, Mr. Cofferati. Now, please. Thank you, President. Commissioner, I've heard how the questions that we're discussing have been in a lot of the petitions that have arrived at the Parliament in recent years. As we've heard several times, there are certain types of uh, problems. One is the, the um, negative effects of matrimonial law, and this is being increased because of the increasing case of uh, travelling of uh, m marriages uh, across border. Um, and often the child at the end of this becomes uh, the subject of, uh, of competition or quarrels, which uh, is very damaging to the child. And of course, we need to talk about social protection. We can't just give the child to, um, to custody of one of the parents. We have to ensure that these people have uh, sufficient protection to live uh, in a dignified way. Also, poverty is a question here. Poverty has increased in all European countries, including in the uh, richest, because there is a gap between the um, more stable parts of society with the higher incomes and those which are um, more fragile. And the children, of course, are at the front line of this. Any type of policy to protect these and um, to try to fight poverty has to take account of children. They have to be the absolute priority. That has to be our starting point. 
Madam Commissioner, colleagues, I am happy that uh, we are uh, unified in uh, what the best interest of child is. This is living with the parents. And if not possible, then uh, the, sh the child should go to the closest possible relatives and only in the third place to uh, institutions. Uh, the European Union uh, promotes mobility of individuals and families, and uh, it is necessary uh, to put on the European uh, level the decision-making or maybe to uh, have some minimum standards in all countries. Uh, I think that what Madame Wickstrom uh, proposes is very positive. We think that we need a cooperation between the member states. We need to create a platform which will help citizens in these situations. Prevention is crucial, and that's why we want a better social and legal protection and social services. Uh, member states play a crucial role, and that's why we want them to have uh, some measures like specialized courts. Uh, of course, uh, uh, if uh, uh, children should be put in custody, then also uh, brothers and sisters should be put together in that custody. Also, the problem is uh, when uh, parents lose their rights for uh, having their children with them in third countries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Curtin, darling, now please. Thank you very much, Chair, Commissioner, Minister. As a member of the Petitions Committee, we received hundreds of petitions, mostly from parents, about child welfare questions. We've heard firsthand of the problems faced in securing the best interests of the child in cross-border cases from some very desperate parents. There are estimated to be up to two million British people living around the rest of the EU and an equal number of EU, EU nationals living in the UK. Freedom of movement has brought our citizens unprecedented opportunities. But now we must ensure that our legal systems and judicial cooperation develop at a similar pace especially when families find themselves in a difficult situation. The concerns raised by citizens demonstrate the clear need to enhance and develop cooperation and information exchange across borders. We've heard calls for a more common understanding on the best interests of the child in line with the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which must always be paramount. And I'd like to hear from the Commission what's intended in this respect. Family law is a national competence and member states um, therefore have a strong responsibility to ensure that they address the increasing pressure on social workers and social services by ensuring that family courts and social services are fully supported and well resourced and that parents and children receive the support needed to understand the legal proceedings they're engaged in and their rights. Finally, we need to stay at the table to negotiate to ensure the rights of British children and other children in Britain, and that means we need to remain inside the EU. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Mr. Buda. Thank you very much, President. An investment in children, of course, is an investment in the future of our society and their education and upbringing in appropriate and dignified conditions should enjoy the highest priority everywhere. The Commission and the Council should make sure they adopt appropriate measures to guarantee that the best interest of the child in the case of a cross-border adoption is guaranteed. It's very important in these sort of situations that children have a possibility to remain in contact with their own culture and to learn and speak their mother tongue. And the parents involved in these I issues should make sure that the siblings are not split up. We have to make sure that the best interest of the child is uh, identified and protected by the prosecuting authorities. We have to understand that they can enjoy EU citizenship even if they're outside the EU we have uh, various trade agreements with the EU, such as Norway, but they uh, are trampling on the social 
the rights of uh, Europe by abusing this particular situation. A three-month-old baby still being uh, breastfed was taken into a foster family without any legal decision on the basis of an administrative decision for unsubstantiated reasons, and that's unacceptable. Thank you, Mr. Radev. Now. Благодаря господин председател, уважаеми колеги, има много проблеми. President, colleagues, the application of Brussels 2A is causing problems for many problem for many families and the interest of their children. And I'll go through some of these problems. First of all, the adoption practices in the European Union without the consent of their biological parents. There have been many cases in the United Kingdom where this practice has become a business. I would call upon the Commission to take the measures necessary to put an end to these practices. Secondly, we have to promote cooperation and exchange of information between courts as well as between social services and national administrations in member states. Finally, I would like to emphasize the need to respect the different social and cultural traditions in member states. It's in the child's interest to stay in their family, even if they don't have the same place of residence uh, as the children. This is particularly true of uh, young children for whom um, the concept of habitual residence is a bit vague. Ms. Estoras. Thank you, President. Indeed, in the Petitions Committee, we've looked at a number of petitions relating to problems that arise when families uh, that are international break down. Now, this kind of thing happens because now there's m more mobility and uh, there's m more multinational families. Now, it's the minus interest that uh, must prevail. There's the uh, 2000 C regu regulation, and over time, you've seen the gaps, the shortcomings. So that's why it's good that we're having this debate, because we do need a revision of this regulation. First of all, we need to have guarantees about the rules and authorities that are, that are applicable, so that we have legal security. Secondly, free circulation of court rulings, because sometimes a court ruling in some country is not implemented as quickly as it should be in a third country. Thirdly, rulings have to be genuinely implemented in time that and there can be appeals in some cases, not, and that of course leads to delays. Fourthly, in, the case, in cases of abduction, the authorities have to act quickly. Six weeks is, a, is the time frame, but that's got to be respected. Uh, fifthly, returns should be quick and efficient. Uh, as Ms. McGinnis pointed out, I have full confidence in the Commission. I think you've uh, really honed in on what really has to be done and done quickly because it's very important for the future. One comment, some colleagues have used this debate to, to, to attack same-sex couples uh, and uh, we don't, uh, uh, I can't accept any form of uh, discrimination. Thank you, Mr. President. Ms. Comodini. Thank you, Chair. For many families where there are disputes, the best interest of the, of the children looks like a fairy tale, but uh, th there is protection, but nobody exactly knows what that is. Some of this, um, some of this comes from um, the fact that many uh, that each child uh, has its own particular interest. As a member of the uh, Legal Affairs Committee, I am very concerned about the fact that the EU has failed to uh, uh, implement uh, clear procedures to determine the best entrance of the child. However, many difficulties arise from the lack of authorities that are directly involved in cases such as those that adopt uh, common knowledge based on common standards. There's an aspect which should be a priority, and that is that we, in each process we should integrate measures that uh, protect children from damage that uh, can arise from the situation of the family and the fact that they are separated from their parents and the fact that they, are, uh, that they don't have the opportunity to develop a relationship with their own family. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you, madam. Now we move on to catch the eye. Mr. Zhitekovsky first. One minute. 
President, Commissioner, Minister. When I studied in Rome, I received a card from a bishop reading, Each child which is born is good news from the God. And uh, I believe that this is very true. Many cases have been mentioned. I'm going to mention one more case uh, of Eva Michalakova, a Norwegian case. Uh, five years ago, a child was taken away from the Czech mother and father based on sexual abuse allegations. The allegation was never proved true, never ever, and still the child was not uh, uh, received uh, by the biological family. Eva Michalakova is a European citizen and what has the EU done uh, for uh, Mrs. Uh, Michalakova to help her uh, get her child children back? Um, this is a crime and our children will never forget uh, about them and we need to address them. Thank you. Caputo. Thank you Mr. Caputo. Now please. Grazie, President. Thank you President. Protection for minors is one of the biggest uh, challenges that uh, c contemporary society faces. In recent dec decades, there have been international agreements that have recognized that ch minors have particular interests, particularly uh, when it comes to access to information. It's necessary to increase cross-border cooperation on minors and to promote mediation and conciliation. Uh, particularly taking account of uh, all of children's interests. We need to have policies that will support families to reduce the use of uh, these uh, social uh, support systems. It's a fundamental that Europe has to be able to guarantee protection uh, for the rights of uh, everyone. And now more than ever, this has to be an absolute priority and uh, nobody should feel that they um, are exempt from that. Thank you, Ms. Wood. Uh, thank you very much, President. Um, I would like to ask the Commissioner and the relevant authorities to make particular efforts to involve children and young people more fully in decisions affecting them. Participation is also a children's right, but it is frequently infringed and poorly promoted. Working with organisations experienced in child participation is, in my view, a good way to develop institutional practice that would better protect the best interests of the child. Thank you very much, Ms. De Marias. Thank you, Chair. As a member of the Petitions Committee, I have seen hundreds of uh, petitions concerning the best interests of uh, children. First of all, in uh, cross-border adoptions, we need to have uh, security of uh, law so that we will have the best interests of uh, children in mind, as well as uh, keeping in mind the rules of uh, citizenship of the, of the Union. A lot of parents uh, have uh, worries concerning the practices of adoption of certain member states that are really problematic when the parents or the families move from one country to another. At the same time, we should uh, drive down uh, bureaucracy concerning the procedures of uh, parental responsibility so that the Hague Convention of 1993 will be applied correctly. At the same time, we should uh, exchange best practices between member states as well as set up specialized courts that will deal uh, with uh, cross-border child uh, abductions. Thank you very much. Senor Jakovic. Mr. Jakovic. Gracias, Presidente. In conflict situations, when there are problems between matrimonial couples and parents, as a rule, children are the ones who get hurt. As a rule, the parents are selfish and very often they are simply trying to protect their own personal interests or even their love towards the child, which is perhaps not directed towards it. What we should do is that, as since we have mobility and people living together from different countries and with 
all of this present we need to do whatever we can to have proper European level of legislation and another detail is important here there are numerous situations in uh, the Balkans where I come from and people living in these countries in candidate countries are also connected in many ways with the member countries and please be so kind and uh, keep in mind this in future talks with these countries thank you Commissioner Jurova, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, thank you very much for this debate, which, as I expected, uh, brought here uh, many very sad and serious uh, true stories, which, which we see in, in Europe and where, as has been said, the children suffer and it's our duty to address the situation with, with the proper legislative act. Uh, several of you mentioned adop adoptions without parental consent, so let me repeat that the adoptions are regulated at national, not at EU level. Adoptions are therefore not also in the scope of the process to a regulation, but it can be generally noted that Article 21 of the United Na Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child imposes on participating countries to ensure that the best interest of the child is the paramount consideration with regard to adoption. But the Convention does not preclude adoption without parental consent. On Norway, uh, I, yeah, I, I expected to, to be asked about the situation and about the position of the European Union. I can only repeat that due to the fact that Norway is not a member state of the European Union and moreover, as I said already before, the functioning of child welfare services is not governed by EU law but by national law. The Commission does not have any competence to intervene with the member states even uh, it's more difficult case in Norway when it comes to the functioning of child protection and welfare services. This is the uh, dry answer from the legal point of view. I can only uh, reassure you that I try every time when I am in, in contact with Norwegian authorities to uh, raise this problem informally and the answer is always uh, the same, that everything is happening according to the Norwegian legislation. In cases where the right to family life or the rights of the children involved are allegedly violated by the Norwegian Child Welfare Services, it is for Norway, including its judicial authorities, to ensure that fundamental rights and especially rights of the ch child are effectively respected and protected in accordance with their national legislation. And the parents concerned can seek redress at the national level only through the competent national authorities, such as through an ombudsman or through the courts at, at the European Court of Human Rights once they have exhausted domestic remedies. Just short uh, note on what Madame Ward said about the need to cooperate with the uh, children's organization, organizations. I can assure you that we are now in very intensive contact and cooperation with them uh, when we try to ease the situation for the children in migration where we together with UNICEF and, and others prepared a comprehensive material which addresses the problems for various angles. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much again for this debate. Uh, we all agree that uh, uh, the best interest of the child belongs to our highest priorities and that the Brussels II regulation uh, tries to tackle with the situation of cross-border disputes and cross-border scope and character of the problems which fully authorizes the Uni European Union uh, the further action and well-targeted legislative solution and uh, other actions like improving the 
functioning of uh, judiciary systems in, in the EU states, uh, in, in EU member states, so that to increase also the trust between the member states to, to judiciary. And uh, so I'm convinced that the proposal which we are preparing and which I will uh, soon submit, the proposal of the amendment of the Brussels 2A, uh, entails such a well-targeted solution which will improve the situation. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Mrs. Jurova. And on behalf of the Council, Mrs. Henny Pleshat has the floor. Chair, um, let me underline once more tonight that it is important to stay true to our founding values. So it is our duty to protect those most vulnerable, including adoptive children. At the same time, and I repeat myself, but at the same time, it is important to understand that the issue of the adoption of children is a matter which is not regulated at EU level, but by national laws and by some international conventions. As I said earlier, the Council awaits with great interest the Commission proposal amending the Brussels 2A regulation, and I am convinced that the amendment will further improve the function of this regulation, particularly with regard to the rules on parental responsibility. Clearly, um, Mr. Chair, we share the same goal, strengthening the rights of the child in the EU. This is an investment not only in their future, but also in the foundations of the Union. Now, one or a number of members refer to, in closing, Mr. Chair, but um, um, a reference was made to um, unaccompanied minors disappearing upon arrival in Europe. And I think it's important to address uh, uh, that as well. First of all, um, it is important that we, need, um, that we get the facts and figures straight uh, and that uh, things are further investigated. But clearly, the thought alone sickens me already. Uncompanied children are among those most vulnerable, and it is deeply troubling that professional gangs might exploit them. Now, the question is, what is the EU doing? And I give you just a few examples. More than 200 million euros uh, is being earmarked to target protection uh, of children. Europol and Eurojust are active in helping uh, to dismantle networks involved in child, uh, the smuggling of children. The European Asylum Support Office works on best practice guidance on assessment of best interests of the child. The EU helps member states to, better equip, to be better equipped to deal with specific needs of child victims of trafficking and outside the EU, um, um, we earmarked 120 million euros for protection programs for vulnerable Syrian refugee children. Work with, um, um, uh, with, uh, with NGOs in, for example, Turkey, Lebanon, Jordan and Iraq. To conclude, Mr. Chair, it is important that EU member states work together to prevent children falling in the hands of criminals. Overall, there is, I believe, ample opportunity to improve the sharing of information between member states. And this is one of the focal points of the Netherlands presidency. Thank you very much. Thank you. And with that, uh, we close this debate. We'll move on to the next point on today's agenda. Uh, this is a brief presentation of uh, various reports. First of all, uh, Mrs. Kuneva on domestic workers and carers in the European Union. Mrs. Kuneva, you have the floor. Thank you. To dear colleagues, we're talking about uh, domestic workers and carers. We trust them with our houses, our children, our parents, and our sick. They allow us to have a career and to enjoy our social life, but they are invisible, they are undeclared, uninsured, and socially excluded. And they are mainly women. There are 2.5 million domestic workers in uh, Europe, and 88% of them are women. They work long hours, with no days off, without medical cover, with no pension plans. 
they work in conditions that cannot be controlled because there's no way to inspect there's no way to find them and uh, protect them our aging population and the fact that uh, women are entering the labor market means that we have uh, greater needs for domestic workers and carers the member states know this however they allow for these needs to be covered uh, in the by the gray economy they cut back on public spending and they take advantage of the waves of migrants as a new cheap source of labor what we need to do is to document the situation in the member states at once we need to have uh, legislation that will cover decent working conditions for these people we need to ratify and apply convention number 189 of the ILO concerning domestic workers which deals with their uh, needs uh, completely we need to move forward with uh, professionalization and certification as well as uh, adopt best practices such as the ones in France and Belgium we need labor unions to come to them because those workers do not know uh, who they have to turn to we also need to carry out inspections while respecting their privacy and we need to inform workers for their rights and employers for their obligations I would especially like to thank Ms. Uh, Tanya Gonzalez for the cooperation we had she drew up the opinion of the employment committee as well as uh, all of the other bodies that are working on the issue we need the support especially now before the vote uh, of this report tomorrow because the conservatives in this uh, parliament have asked for split votes